everybody, welcome back to Hack and Splash Page. I'm Tiffany, and I'm sorry about last week. I was sick, um, and you know what? You wouldn't want this anyway. I was a mess. Like, all this, it was just a mess. I mean, it all winter. All winter. And as soon as we hit spring, I got sick. So, yeah. But I'm back, and here we are. So today we're going to be talking about East of West, a book by Jonathan Hickman with art by Nick Dragoda? Maybe? Um, and Colors by Frank Martin. Um, this is the book I was going to do last week, uh, but let's just say, like, I, I couldn't, I couldn't, I could barely form a cogent sentence. I was at, like, 50% brain capacity. East of West is an alternate history story, which leads to a very different kind of future. The future here is filled with space, future tech, and cowboys, among other things. So, we have the future, plus a western, and then we just add in the impending apocalypse. Basically, at the end of a way longer than we know in our timeline or our history, Civil War, a comet hits, uh, treaties are signed, uh, which create the seven nations of America. A Christian prophet and the Native American chief put forth two parts of the message. It was kind of a busy day. However, the message is incomplete, and it's not until 50 years later that the dying Mao Zedong, I don't know if I'm saying that right, completes it. But this is really just the exposition for the appearance of a white man clad in more white. And I mean like he's white, like devoid of color white. Not just this paleness that you're seeing here, I mean like white. Sheet of paper white. He's joined by his two companions, Wolf and Crow, who I happen to think are just amazingly designed. While Death is on the move, he himself is actually being hunted by three color-coded children. They're actually three of the four horsemen of the apocalypse, Death being the fourth, however, he is an adult and is no longer traveling with them. War, famine, and conquest. Actually, it turns out that pestilence, which is what I typically associate with the horsemen of the apocalypse, is more of a modern interpretation of conquest. I looked it up. They shoot up essentially out of the ground. There's a big circle. In the circle, there's uh, triangles, and they just come up out of the ground. They're like reborn, clearly because they make note of that they were once adults and now they're kids again. Some of them have changed, actually they've all changed sexes. It's kind of weird. They note that too. It's weird. I don't know. I don't know if that means something later on. So what does any of this have to do with the exposition? Well, the three horsemen along with the Chosen are looking to bring about the end of the world as instructed by the message, even if that means killing death. The fact is, death is supposed to be the fourth part of this Triforce of the End Times. Let's face it, it looks like a Triforce. It's everywhere. It's upside down. It's all I can think about. <laughs> but he has his own agenda, like killing the Chosen. This agenda of his came about after meeting Sha Lian of the House of Mao. She's an amazing warrior, and the two of them begin a romance which will lead to a child, ruin, and misery. Without spoiling too much for you, Death gets wind that Sha Lian is still alive, which is really a 180 for the state that he thought she was in. He storms the House of Mao in New Shanghai along with Wolf and Crow, and they essentially defeat an entire army just to reach her. However, their reunion isn't really a fairy tale one. She's pretty angry about quite a few things, one of which death is off to remedy. That's kind of where actually the trade ends, and like I said, I don't like to spoil things for you guys. In fact, we meet quite a few other characters, but if we go into them and all the politics that's going on, well, this is just gonna end up being like story time with Miss Tiffy. So story-wise, I think Hickman does a really good job of creating a scenario where it's not weird to root for Death. I mean, Death is really an anti-hero here, and I do love an anti-hero, so I was pleased to see a situation where I was like, now this is all right. It's a little weird, but not really, so I'm just gonna go for it. The dialogue is good, and I found that I started to read certain characters with like a voice style. Typically, it's a really bad southern accent. While the story seems to have many threads going through it, sometimes I just kind of feel like they're gonna be loose ends. And while I appreciate the mystery of the story, it doesn't always feel like it's unfolding in a natural way. In the end, I was left with questions, some from the progression of the plot, and some because it seemed like things were intentionally left out just so that I would have questions. However, in Hickman's writing, I do like some of the subtext he puts in. So, okay, sometimes it's a little bit more than just subtext that he slips in for characters. Like with Wolf and Crow, they have a really nice poignant moment right before they go to New Shanghai, and I, I just, I loved it. It was just, it just slipped right in there, and oh, I liked it a lot. If you haven't guessed already, I really like those characters. Also, I really love the fact that while the horsemen typically have a Christian connotation, Hickman seems to be making the story less overtly religious and more spiritual in nature. Okay, now let's talk about some art. 
Dragata's art is great, and like I said before, I love the design of Wolf and Crow. It just blew me away. Overall, the characters and just all the designs in this book are great. I love the weapons, the armor, the locations, everything. I really like too that he plays with his panel layout during the combat sequences. Sometimes he breaks up really wide panels into smaller ones and tends to try to fit in more than is usually recommended for a page. And that kind of really helps to create this hectic feeling and something that you might associate with battle or war. Part of me is a little glad that I didn't get the opportunity to pick this up in floppies because I don't know if I would have made it through the first volume. And I'm actually interested now to pick up the next trade because I'm curious to see if the book starts to address the threads left behind or if it's just going to make new ones. At this point, they're on issue 18 and they have several collected volumes. So if you're interested in the Horse of the Apocalypse, alternate history stories, or future western stories, I'd say you should definitely pick it up. Alright guys, question time. I figure since we're dealing with historical errors, uh, errors that are made into alternate histories, and the Horsemen, I figured I'd ask you guys, what era would you guys want to see the Horsemen enter into? Horsemen of the Civil War, Horsemen of World War I, Horsemen of the War of 1812? This is really stretching my knowledge of wars. It doesn't have to be a war. I think I want to put the Horsemen into the early times, the early years, I should say, of the Tokugawa Shogunate. Uh, in the in Japanese history, um, it's a cool time period. Early on, later on, not so much. Where you know you got you know samurai and all that. I think that'd be really cool. Horse of the Apocalypse, Japan, samurai. Let's do it. I bet someone's gonna post in the link down below about how that someone has already done that. Probably in an anime or manga or something. And if so, then I want to read it. Is that pretty cool? Yeah. So I look forward to hearing what you guys have to say. That is it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, give us a like, subscribe to the channel, or you can click this annotation to check out everything else we're doing here on Comic Pop. Also, in the description box down below, you can find a link to our Tee Public store with all kinds of neat stuff and some shirts and stuff that we designed. One thing we designed for now, but more's coming. It's almost done. It's over there. It's cool. I think so. Anyway, I will see you guys next week with another episode of Hack and Splash. I'm Tiffany, and I, it's a Triforce on the back. I can't, I, it's because I got Hyrule Warriors this week. It's a Triforce. It's just, that's all I can think about. It's just triangles. Da -da -da -da.